This here is one of my uh, glass circuit boards. Um, I've changed the process some, but a lot of people have been asking how I do my surface mount. So I figured I'd do this video just kind of showing you, once I have the glass circuit board, what do I do to get all the parts on and get the whole thing moving. So here's that video. I'm going to take my uh, solder paste here, and I'm going to just squirt it out on this little piece of, like, uh, copper circuit board. Anything will really do. Um, I happen to use the, the circuit board just because of, well, convenience, per sake. Um, I use the syringes, so you can just squirt the, uh, the solder paste out. And you can have some left over, just throw it out when you're done. It doesn't really matter. So, that's out. Just put the cap back on the Kester, put it back in the fridge, and then we'll get moving with the next part. Before we really get moving with the parts, the first step is actually to uh, apply solder paste to the whole board. The way you do this is by taking a little toothpick here and grabbing some of the solder paste onto the end of it. And as long as you've been refrigerating your solder paste, it should behave pretty well. For TQPF parts, you can kind of drag it along like that. And this will make it so that all of the pins will connect and you don't have to dab each and every one. So you just start at one pin and then drag the solder paste to the other end. You'll find that uh, if you get too thin it won't really work out. You can go back and you can add more without much fuss. For the individual parts, like these 603s here, you simply dab on each where each pad will go. While some people use stencils and whatnot, I find this to be easiest because my designs are mostly one-off. If I were to have, say, a thousand of a certain circuit board being done, I would certainly switch to stencils. But so far, the biggest run I think I've ever made of any circuit board is about five or six. Certainly not worth having to go get a stencil laser printed and uh, then worked on. So I'm going to do this for basically all of the pads. Also with uh, SOICs, you can do the same sort of thing you do with TQPFs. It takes a lot of practice to get the solder paste to do exactly what you want, and even with a lot of practice, sometimes it doesn't quite play ball the way you'd like. It, it really does take practice. Practice gets you better, practice gets you better, but practice will never make you perfect at this. All right, that took about six, uh, maybe seven minutes to do there. I have them mostly done. I may have missed one or two, and if I did, it's really not a big deal because I can just go back as I'm placing the parts and add some uh, extra solder paste wherever I need it. So now I'm gonna start placing the parts. For some things, you're gonna wanna hold a lot of your surface mount parts in a box or some other container. I love this box from a uh, from Jameco. There are other boxes with plenty of different options. Uh, this one happens to have a pretty good array. I was happy with it. I label all of my parts. I actually have three of these boxes to house all the parts that I have. Uh, the idea is anytime you make an order to DigiKey, if you only need one part, buy ten. And that way you'll have a nice collection to go whenever you need. And I, all I'll have to do is I can pop open the lid and I can take a pair of tweezers, which I love these tweezers from Pakistan. They're really cheap, $3 a pop from DigiKey. And you reach in, ah, you grab the part that you need, and you take them and you put them out on the ground and you pick them up from the surface of the workbench and apply them to wherever you need. And that's how we're gonna be doing uh, our work today. The first box I have here has mostly uh, 0805 parts and a couple of the capacitors and some other stuff. So I'm going to place these first, and if I forget any or miss any, I can simply come back to them. It won't be too difficult. What I do is I take the parts out and I place them down near the board where I'm going to be using them. 
and I pick them up from the table and place them where they need to go. So for this one, this is a, uh, a 10 microfarad capacitor, which is marked by W on my circuit board here. So all I have to do is place these wherever the uh, there's a W, and I will be golden. It's okay to do this iteratively, where you do some, and then you do some more, and you play some of one type, and you go back to another box. Whatever keeps it interesting, whatever stops you from getting bored, just go for it. Have fun. Well, that's it. Uh, everything's populated. It's off to the toaster oven. Now I'm going to test the part. If I plug this up, it should flash the network green just briefly, and then it should eventually link up, even if I'm not talking to it. Hmm. It's not necessarily a good sign there. I don't really know what's going on. But uh, I'll try flashing it anyway and see where it gets me. So I just have to make clean. Well, at least I identified the processor. Hey, it linked too. And I'm pinging it continuously over here, so hopefully what I'll see is the thing should just start working miraculously. And it's reset, it's talking, and we have pings. So, looks like this circuit board works. Time to move on to more fun stuff like programming.